Fastlane was pretty decent. Wasn't great, but it was decent. I'm going to preface this by saying one thing. I, I, I still don't think, as far as the storytelling goes and the build to this pay-per-view, that the results made sense. But I am trying to be positive moving forward. So let's just get into it. Starting off the night, <laughs> we had the six-man tag match that they never announced on television between The Authority and Rowan Ziggler and Ryback. It was not a extremely good match. Rollins really needed... To... <sighs> there needs to be more exposure of Seth Rollins... I don't know why they've cooled so much on Eric Rowan and that they've been having him basically get punked on every turn. He's been getting beat down like at least once a week and been killed. Ryback's, Ryback's looked the strongest as far as uh, domination in this in this part, but the uh, authority wins with a finish that Rollins wasn't even involved in. Essentially, Ziggler gets... I think it was Ziggler gets knocked out. It doesn't really matter. They they lose, and then they proceed to beat down all four... Oh, oh, sorry, all three of the guys, the authority proceeds to beat them down. And then Randy Orton returns, and he doesn't get his hands on Rollins, but he does manage to RKO everyone but Rollins a big show. So, yeah. Randy Orton's return, and that was really all this was, was a framing device. Orton's return and a setup for probably Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. Which is okay, I guess. It just depends on how they build this going for over the next five weeks. Uh, the next match, I believe, was Goldust versus Stardust. And I really enjoyed this match. They were both really good workers. My prediction was, again, wrong. Goldust actually won, but I think the way they told this story is clever, and it's going to continue. Before the match, uh, Dusty Rhodes talks to Goldust, and Goldust is like, I have to be, I have to kick the shit out of him. I have to make it so that he does not put this makeup back on ever again. And Dusty's just like, I love both of you. I really don't think anyone needs to get hurt. So, with that, like, weighing heavily on his mind, Goldust goes out to fight Cody, or Stardust. Stardust has a new, new, a little bit new look. He, he, he um, changed his paint a little bit so it's, he doesn't have any, any, like, around his mouth. He's still got, like, the lipstick tough, but he's not around his mouth anymore. It ends at the edges of the stars, of the star points. And he doesn't have a shirt anymore. So, he's now got, you know, pants and, like, Long sleeved gloves. It was an interesting look. It, it's nice to see Cody though change it up, and he has been. He's been changing it up quite a bit. But uh, I thought this was a really enjoyable match, especially for like how long Goldust has been going. It, it kind of just makes me disappointed that he's never gotten a main event push because I honestly think that Goldust is always been a good worker, and I honestly think he could have easily done main event and and killed it. It, it just makes me sad that he's been he he's been running with these weird characters, and that's really what's been holding him back. And I hope Cody eventually moves on from these weird characters too, because I don't want him to be held back by that either. I'd love to see Cody Rhodes in the main event. I th I think he could someday. I just don't I don't know if they think he's got the look or not. I I it's really I really don't think they they I really think they'll cool on him because I don't think they think he has a look that will that'll sell. But um, the story told in this match basically was that Goldust's heart wasn't wasn't in trying to really hurt Stardust so that he doesn't want to put on the makeup anymore. But he still is hoping that the beating him will will not will knock some sense into him. And he does. He does beat him. He he surprises him with a roll up and he gets the win. But it, 
wasn't enough. After the match, uh, Stardust attacks Goldust right in front of their dad. So this is definitely going to continue, and I'm excited. This is probably the story I am most invested in right now. Um, next match was the tag team match, and I think this was the best match of the night, honestly. All four of these guys can go, and all four of these guys can go well. And even working the WWE style, they're athletic and just interesting enough in the ring that it's just, it's great. It's great to watch. This is the only time tonight that my prediction was right. Only time. Uh, Kid and Cesaro, though it was a little dubious, did win, and they walked away with the tag titles. Which just excites me, because I honestly, honestly, they were, it, they were like 3-0 and o against the Usos, as far as clean, or cleanish victories. So it makes sense that Kid and Cesaro got their number and won. Okay. Yeah, and then had the conversation between uh, Sting and Triple H. And it basically probably went as anyone would have expected. Triple H comes out and he's no longer businessman Triple H. He is ass kicker Triple H. He's in a leather coat and a t-shirt and he's ready to he's ready for a fight. Which, I don't know. I don't know if it's because he's like, I, I need a different persona or something. But, it, it's good to see him ready for a fight. But then Sting comes out, and they do some talking, and he's just like, he, he says that we could do it the easy way and just discuss this. But, you know, it's just, it goes the hard way. And once again, Triple H gets punked. He tries attacking Sting. He doesn't really get in that much offense before Sting just fires back. He then goes for his sledgehammer, but Sting is right on top of him. Presses his, has his bat, presses it against Triple H's throat. Triple H drops his sledgehammer. And then Triple H tries to get in another cheap shot as Sting's walking away and gets Scorp Scorpion Death Dropped. So this is set up, and we're going to have a match at WrestleMania between these two, and hopefully it will be awesome. Uh, then we had Paige versus N Nikki for the women's title, and or for the Divas title. I'm sorry, I missed the I missed the women's. Uh, it was okay, not a great match, mm. mostly because they didn't do anything really that that special. This could have been a match on SmackDown or Raw, easy. It's just that Paige is really good. Nikki is not that good at all. The Bellas really have never been that great in the ring. And watching this, you could see it, unfortunately. it's Paige is being held back because there's so many... He's, she's being made to work with so many divas that don't have much in their arsenal don't have that much in-ring capability, and it's really sad. I wish we could see better matches. Uh, I was wrong, though. Paige loses. I was not happy. She has been basically dominating every diva going up to this, including Brie Bella, which was basically the same situation, just smaller boobs. Because <laughs> Nikki and Brie fight pretty much the same. I don't know. Moving on, uh, Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt for the Intercontinental title. And first of all, I, I didn't like the story leading up to this because I don't think it made much sense. I don't know how this match even was legally signed because Dean Ambrose is guilty of forging the right Wade Barrett's signature. And all Wade Barrett has to do is walk into the office, show the video of what happened on, on Raw, and be like, hey... He forced me to sign this. He held my hand and signed this. That's not technically me signing it. That's him. 
this is a forgery, and not only do I not have to defend my title, he should go to jail for forging my signature, because that's a crime. <laughs> but, um, of course that doesn't happen. <laughs> of course that doesn't happen. No, instead we have a match, and it's an okay match. Not great, but okay. Up until the point where Wade Barrett, and this is the part that I don't get, Wade Barrett decides, screw this, I'm done, I'm just walking away with my title. And I was, and this is exactly what I was thinking, was, Wade, why do you feel like you, you why don't you just walk away? And, and you know what, he eventually tried. And it became this interesting struggle where Dean had to try to get Wade Barrett back so he could win. So Wade Barrett doesn't get counted out. And he... So he can win in a way where he wins the title belt. But in the process, Dean Ambrose just gets himself disqualified. And it's not like he wasn't warned. So, Dean backed himself into this corner now, where he barely got this title match. And he got himself disqualified, despite being warned. So, he assumes the only thing he can do to rectify this and get another title shot, so that he can, if he can face Wade, I presume, at WrestleMania, is to steal the belt. Again, I know Wade Barrett is the chicken shit in this thing, but Dean Ambrose is it, Dean Ambrose is committing crimes. Chicken shit or not, Dean Ambrose is guilty of forgery, entrapment, and now theft. If Wade Barrett just called the police, I think he'll get his shit back. <laughs> I don't think you have to worry about Dean Ambrose at all. And I know they're trying to set up for WrestleMania. That's unfortunately what kind of held this this pay-per-view back, was that most of these finishes were set up, set up for WrestleMania and not, not tying in with the s stories and the builds. Very well, unfortunately. But I think Dean Ambrose is in a worse position position than he was before to get an IC title match. So moving on, uh, we have what looks to be the Undertaker coming out, and because we have the Druids come out, and then we have Undertaker's music, and a casket is brought out. And it turns out it's Wade Barrett inside the casket. Oh my god, Wade Barrett's been talking about The Undertaker this whole time. I think everyone knew this. We, I mean, some of us were speculating that Undertaker wasn't going to come back this year. And that this was going to be a red herring. But if Undertaker doesn't fight Wade Barrett now, it's just going to be a waste of time. And a waste of Wade Barrett's character. So, the Undertaker better be coming back. Otherwise, Wade Barrett is going to be in trouble. Or not Wade Barrett. Bray Wyatt is going to be in trouble. If I said Wade Barrett that a whole time, I meant Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. <laughs> you can kind of... Okay. I think you can see where I could get the two names mixed up. <laughs> okay, final two matches. Rusev and Cena. U.S. title. Not go how I thought, but I also liked how it went. It was a it was a good match, especially for Cena. I think Cena and Rusev worked off each other really well, and I don't think the crowd was doing them any favors. I this was a shit crowd for the most part. It was sad, but it was a really competitive match. There was a couple times where Cena looks like he's got Rusev dead to rights. 
including a cross, including a Chris Puller cross face, as well as his S S the S D S T F. But um, after eventually he gets Cena in the accolade. Cena fights out, and then because of a distraction by Lana, Rusev hits the low blow. So he should have been disqualified, like I had thought was going to happen. But he hits a low blow and then puts the accolade back on, and Cena's just completely knocked out, and he loses by. Submission, but only because Cena was unable to respond to the referee. Which makes which makes Rusev look like the dirty fucking heel that got that would have lost and only got away with it because he's a fucking piece of shit. And makes and this gives Cena an a great comeback story. Basically, the almost the comeback story he should have had with Brock Lesnar, except for Seth Rollins ruined it. I expect John Cena to win the United States Championship at WrestleMania. So, let's see what happens. It'd be kind of cool if it was last year. This sort of story was happening, and it'd be like the 10-year anniversary of his, you know, I, th I think his first United States Championship win. Because I think the first time he won it was WrestleMania 20. But, um, it's st it still is going to be cool. I, I am really looking forward to that match. Because this is a good match. I expect that to be a great match. And now finally... Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns. Now, as I've been saying, the way they've been building this between Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns, and the way they've booked them, Daniel Bryan has looked stronger, more aggressive, and and blade and flatly been showing up Roman Reigns at every turn coming into fast lane. And Roman Reigns has looked weak. He's looked sloppy. He's looked lucky. And there and if you will go on the booking, there is absolutely zero chance that Roman Reigns should have had of beating Daniel Bryan. And that's really my only problem with this match. This is probably the best match I've ever seen Roman Reigns have. And that's a problem. Because if it was because it was against Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns' match with Brock Lesnar is going to be worse, and it's going to be extremely disappointing. And that's our main event at WrestleMania. Because this was a really good match from both of them. Reigns looked strong in this match, which makes the booking leading up to this either make absolutely no sense or make it look like Roman Reigns was holding back and not trying. But if they never address that, this win make this victory makes no sense for Roman Reigns. But anyways, Roman beats Daniel Bryan. Beats him clean. Does not turn heel like I, like he should have for the victory. Because I think Roman Reigns turning heel there was probably the smartest thing for the story. But no, they want him to be the face. They want him to go to WrestleMania and be the conqueror of Brock Lesnar. It's not going to be believable. As awesome as this match was, his match with Brock Lesnar is probably going to suck be disappointing, and it's probably going to fall flat on its face. I'm going to be as optimistic as I can here and hope that it doesn't, but I'm not, I, I can't say I'm looking forward to it. Daniel Bryan, at the end of this match, comes over to Roman Reigns, and he points at him in the chest, and he goes, You better beat Brock Lesnar. Because, basically because Daniel Bryan's like, because if you don't, I know I would've. 
and you winning here means nothing. So I'm looking forward to the build. I I hope WrestleMania is better than I'm thinking it's going to be. And Fastlane, Fastlane was better than I much better than I expected. So it was a good pay-per-view. Not a great, but good pay-per-view. Take care, everyone.